Hello everybody, welcome to Filmmaking Today, Boyan Dulovic here. So, would you like to turn your lens into a wide angle lens for only 20-25 bucks? Stay tuned for more. Alright, so this is the wide angle lens adapter. This one was made by Digital Concepts. It's one of those Chinese products that go by different names. I've seen newer made it and various other companies. So basically this is what it is. It's a very simple adapter. You've got the lens cap in the front and you've got the one on the back. You just unscrew that one. And uh, once you've done that, you see it's basic basically made out of two components which are basically just two lenses. You've got uh, the, the front one and you've got the back one. The back one is basically the macro lens and you can unscrew that as well. And once you do that, it's like I said, it's basically just two big lenses. And then uh, you just screw this one back. And in order to use it, all you have to do is you have to screw this onto the lens that you're using. Now, in my case, I needed a step up ring this one right here, which is a 46 millimeter, that's what my lens is, to a 52 mil because that's the, the diameter of this adapter. And then once you slap that puppy on, which is about, you know, five, six bucks or so, and then you can just screw this one onto your lens. Uh, in your case, if your diameter of, of your lens is 52 mil, you won't even need a step up ring adapter. And so there you go. Once you just screw this on, that's it. That's all you need to do. And this is what it looks like on my 25 mil Panasonic lens. It doesn't really add too much bulk. It adds a little bit. So depending on the lens that you're using, if you're using a pancake lens, it's really not going to add that much to begin with. So in in this video we're going to talk about these three lenses the lumix 14 mil the 25 mil and the olympus 30 mil macro lens and let's start with the 25 mil and see how this adapter works with it so here's a, a chart uh, where you can see the lens is wide open at f-stop 1.4 and as you can see in the corners there's definitely some distortion going on it's very blurry but when you uh, stop it down to 4 f-stop 4 it's a lot better clear on the edges and you know it just works much nicer and if you go down the 8 it's definitely distortion free the blurriness is gone and you can use this lens for you know uh, landscape photography easily and uh, here's an example so this is the lens without and then here's the lens with the adapter and as you can see you do get a lot more in the frame with this adapter which is really cool so you know this becomes a very nice landscape shot um yes there is some vignetting happening right now because i i'm not actually sure what the f-stop was that i shot this at it wasn't eight i think it was probably around four so that's why you get some blurriness around the edges and here's another example of this toy car without the adapter and now with the adapter as you can see you get a lot more in the frame it makes this lens a lot more versatile which is great now let's talk about the 14 mil lens now this lens is slightly different so here as you can see wide open which is f-stop 2.5 there's a lot more distortion happening and also uh, on the edges there's not just the blurriness happening you also do get lens distortion happening with this lens because it's a 14 mil lens as opposed to the 25 so in this case it makes it even wider than it already is and hence why you get a bit of a fisheye lens effect which definitely is not the greatest so that's something you got to keep in mind with a 14 mil lens now when we go to f-stop 4 a lot of the blurriness does go away unfortunately the the fish islands effect remains that's something you cannot fix with uh, just changing the uh, aperture however you are able to fix some of that in post uh, with after effects or um, you know a lot of other editing programs do have lens correction filters and if we go uh, down to f-stop 8, uh, this also becomes a much sharper lens. Even if you look at the outer edges, it is a lot sharper compared to f-stop 4 and uh, certainly f-stop 2.5, which is definitely great. But like I said, the fisheye lens distortion does remain. So that's something you got to keep in mind and make sure to fix it in other ways in post. And here's an example of some footage with this lens without the adapter. And then here it is with the adapter and again as you can see you do gain a lot more in terms of how much you see in the frame but unfortunately as you can see from the base here that fisheye lens effect does remain so that is something to keep in mind 
Now let's talk about the Olympus 30mm macro lens and see how this adapter works with that. Uh, when the lens is wide open at 3.5 f-stop, it's actually it's not bad. I mean, again, on the edges you can see blurriness, but uh, there is no distortion, lens distortion. When you go to 4, you know, it's not that big of a difference because it's 3.5. But uh, when you go to the next one, uh, let's say 8 right here, um, it's definitely a lot clearer on the edges, a lot less uh, blurriness happening. So this will work very nicely with a macro lens. And as you can see here, it's nice if you are really zoomed in onto an object, but you still want to get more in frame. This lens or this adapter will do the job. So for example, here's a toy car and um, you can uh, right here, you can use this lens to really get up close. And as you can see right here, I was literally an inch away from the toy car it allowed me to get a lot more in frame which is really nice and um, it makes macro photography easier because you can go up close but still get a lot more of the object in frame which is great and as always links to everything you saw here will be in the description so please check those out all in all I think this adapter is pretty sweet and makes lenses very versatile um, than they already are so that's it guys as you can see this little adapter right here is pretty versatile now, of course, if you, you know, want to spend the money and get a an actual ultra wide angle lens, you know, this guy's not going to compete with that one, obviously. But that kind of a lens costs you, you know, 800, 900 thousand plus dollars, you know, or if you get a manual one, you can get it for 500 bucks or 20, 25 bucks. All right. So, I mean, you know, everything has its uh, pros and cons as you can see this guy um, while it doesn't you know uh, create a, you know a lot of vignetting or you know blurs around the edges or anything like that or lens distortion it does create some depending on the lens that you are using uh, my personal um, opinion is um, my 25 mil lens and you know 30 mil and you know the, that focal length is probably the best suited for this guy if you are trying to avoid the you know uh, distortion and the uh, the blur around the edges right um, those seem to do better those focal lengths so um, you know something to keep in mind as you saw with my 14 mil you know, it's not the greatest. Uh, I mean, you got to keep in mind, basically what this lens does is it takes whatever your focal length is and, you know, you, you multiply that by uh, times 0.45, right? So, you know, your 25 mil becomes 11.25, somewhere around there. So obviously your 14 mil will become, I guess, 6 mil, somewhere around there. And, you know, that's why you're having uh, the distortion, the, the fisheye uh, lens um, type of a distortion, which... You know, if that's what you're looking for, hey, go for it. You know, you'll be fine. But in my case, I don't want that. I actually want uh, the least amount of distortion possible. So, um, you know, yeah. Once you know these types of limitations, and like I said, if you don't have 800 plus dollars to spend on an ultra wide angle lens, this guy can come very handy. That's for sure. Another thing, as I mentioned, you might need uh, these step-up rings. So, um, as I mentioned, uh, the, the diameter of this guy, at least the one I'm using here, is... Uh, let me just double-check here. Uh, where does it say? Uh, it doesn't say anywhere, but... Um, okay, yeah, you know, 52. Um, so, 52 mil, that's the diameter of uh, this lens. So, um, of this side, I mean. So, if your lens is 52, that's fine. If it's not, you're going to have to compensate for that, getting a step-up ring or step-down ring, whatever it is. So, something to keep in mind. They're not expensive. You're looking at 5 to $10, depending on where you're getting it. So, you know, it's not going to break the bank, but something to keep in mind. And other than that, I think... As I always say in my videos, as long as you understand the limitations of these gadgets, I think they can serve you very well and, uh, you know, it can definitely enhance your productivity. So, keep that in mind. As always, if you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends, hit that uh, bell icon to be notified of future videos and all that good stuff and stay tuned for more. Thanks.